Cuts and lacerations are extremely common in construction. Impalements are also pretty common, and they can range from simple splinters to being stabbed by projecting objects. The first goal is to stop the bleeding. For minor cuts and scrapes, bleeding often does stop on its own. But look, when bleeding doesn't stop quickly, applying gentle pressure with a clean bandage and elevating the wounded area will slow down or stop the flow. Once bleeding stopped, rinse that wound with clean water. It's best to avoid applying cleansers to the inside of a wound. Once cleansed, pat the area dry and cover it appropriately. You can add a healing and antibacterial ointment as well. For a splinter or smaller embedded material like gravel, for instance, unused or sanitized tweezers should be used to first remove the foreign material as thoroughly as is possible. If you have a serious impalement case, it's safer to keep the object in to avoid bleed outs while you're waiting for emergency medical personnel to arrive. A lot of times, the victim might try to remove the object themselves, but you have to tell them not to. Elevate the wounded area, apply pressure around, but not directly on that embedded object, and to help stop bleeding, use clean bandages. Wad them up near the point of impalement. What if you got amputations or other really serious lacerations? First aid is again being administered while you're awaiting the arrival of emergency medical personnel. You should attempt to stop the bleeding through the use of tourniquets and bandages. Don't place amputated body parts directly on ice. Do keep them in cold environments though. You should wrap them carefully to avoid direct contact with ice. If a wound's deep or has gaping or jagged edges, stitches would be needed, which is well beyond the scope of first aid. It's also true of any injury where bleeding won't stop or it's gushing out. For all serious injuries like impalements and amputations, be on the lookout for the victim going into shock or cardiac arrest. You know, another common and typically less serious scenario is a nosebleed. Someone experiencing a nosebleed should sit down and remain still. Pinch the lower portion of the nose gently but firmly. That's the part of the nose that doesn't feel bony. The victim might be able to do this on their own, and you should keep pressure going for at least 15 minutes. Contrary to popular belief, people experiencing a nosebleed should not lean their head backward. Why? It might cause blood to flow into the throat and then induce vomiting. Instead, they should lean their head forward and continue breathing through their mouth. Once bleeding stopped, use a cold compress. You can apply it to constrict the affected blood vessels. Then the victim can stand upright and they should be monitored to make sure the bleeding's actually stopped. If they're lightheaded, help them stay steady or sit upright to avoid further injury. In some cases, nosebleeds can actually be a sign of a more severe condition. So ongoing monitoring of the victim's status has to be completed to determine if additional medical help is required. If the nosebleed is the result of an injury, the victim should definitely seek follow-up care. 